Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. I actually just got back home. Today I was at the Intel launch event for their new ninth generation series of processors they were hosting at the World Trade Center in New York City. Had a really good time. Always like to go to these things, especially because I get to interact with colleagues. I saw uh, Steve from Gamers Nexus there, uh, Paul from Paul's Hardware, uh, Bit with Kyle was there, and a bunch of other people, Keith from WCCF Tech. So it's, it was nice kind of getting to meet some people that I had met before and also putting faces to names of the people that I talk over email. So it's always fun getting to go to these uh, industry launch events. And of course, we get the first chance to get kind of hands-on experience and uh, experience these products and be able to ask questions and stuff, which just helps us later on in terms of our testing. So today we're going to be going over um, everything that we found out today. We've got prices. We've got specs. Uh, I've also got some information after talking to some of the guys there that were doing the overclocking on the 9900K processor, the new 8-core, 16-threaded mainstream part from Intel. So we're going to get into all of the information here. So for most of you guys out there, you're probably going to be interested primarily in the new mainstream part. So they've got the i5, i7, and i9, which has definitely had a shakeup compared to the previous generations. Uh, they also did announce a new Xeon processor, a 28-core. Uh, also the X series, um, you know, kind of an update to what they did last year. This is very much a refresh on the last generation, but they are adding in some new... Uh, improvements architecturally and some other features like the uh, ninth gen mainstream processor now have integrated Wi-Fi, which is actually pretty awesome that they're going to have that integrated right into the CPU. So you don't need to worry about getting a motherboard that'll support it or buying an adapter or anything like that. It's going to be baked right into the chip. So that's actually a pretty nice feature, probably something most people don't really think about. But I can't tell you how many times I've thrown together systems and not had uh, Wi-Fi set up or handy or the motherboard didn't support it, something along those lines, and I had to go find my adapter. And it's just, it could be a pain in the butt or an added cost for, you know, some people that maybe don't have a Wi-Fi adapter laying around. Also with the new 9th gen processors, they are finally going to a soldered thermal interface material, their STIM. So they are finally going to be soldering these CPUs, which is going to mean improved thermals, possibly better overclocking at the end of the day. And when you're adding more cores onto the same die, you're, you're going to want to have the best cooling that you can possibly get. And this is, you know, also overnight going to completely kill the delitting business, probably, since the reason that people delid their processors in the first place is because Intel was using thermal paste and not a soldered TIM. So now there's really not going to be much reason to go ahead and do that unless they do a poor job or they don't use good enough solder or something. I'm sure people will still uh, want to pry apart their processors to get a closer look and see the kind of job that Intel did um, with the soldered TIM here, especially on the first round here with the ninth gen processors. So, but it's a, it's a good thing at the end of the day that they are going to a soldered TIM. Um, someone in the crowd did actually ask what the uh, increased cost was just for using a solder versus a thermal, thermal, thermal paste, and uh, they would not reply. They wouldn't go into the cost of manufacturing. So, I have a feeling it probably only cost a few cents extra, uh, and they probably didn't want to answer that question because then they would have to admit that it was silly that they haven't done it sooner. Now on to the specs and the prices. Now obviously the most exciting one here is probably the i9-9900K, so it's 8 cores and 16 threads. The first time that they're doing this with the mainstream, and I have a feeling we probably wouldn't have seen these this soon if it was not for the big shakeup that AMD Ryzen brought into the market last year, but that's really why we need good competition is because it pushes the envelope further and forces the competition to rise to the occasion, no pun intended, rise, Ryzen. Uh, so eight cores, 16 threads, they are saying it can turbo up to five gigahertz, but that will not be across all cores, of course, but I'm expecting these to be able to hit 5 gigahertz on a decent cooling solution as the previous Coffee Lake processors were able to do that. They did have an overclocking uh, setup there with a few different PCs. Two of them were running on liquid nitrogen and they had some scores posted, like some world record type scores and some, th some th synthetic benchmarks. Uh, but just keep in mind that those were running on liquid nitrogen. And even with liquid nitrogen, the temperatures certainly got um, pretty warm when they were running it up. They were running it up like five gigahertz and I was still seeing the temps um, get pretty high, but they were definitely throwing out some uh, impressive scores at the end of the day. And I did talk to one of the overclockers there uh, about the 9900K and overclocking and what he was seeing when, you know, running on a normal uh, air 
based cooling solution and he said it was able to hit 5 gigahertz pretty easily. Um, obviously, once we get these in-house and we're able to do some more testing, we'll see how much further we could push them past 5 gigahertz. You know, on a really golden sample with Coffee Lake, you know, you could expect to see 5.1, 5.2, especially if you did delitting. But now the fact that these are soldered means you don't really even have to do that. So I'm definitely hoping to see these processors hitting maybe just a little bit above five gigahertz. And it is also pretty good that they've managed to keep the same TDP here. So it's a 95 watt TDP, uh, increase the cache, 16 megabytes of cache up to 40 PCIe lanes. And it is gonna be coming out at $488. So a little bit pricey there, but uh, eight core 16 thread at five gigahertz. I don't know if that's too much to ask for. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Um, really the, and like the, the weirdest thing about this lineup is that rather than, you know, you know, segmenting the different processors by core count, they they decided to do it by removing hyper threading, even at the i7, which I think is going to leave a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths that the i7 9700K is now going to be eight cores, but it's only going to be eight threads. So it doesn't have any hyper threading, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I think they probably would have been better off if they did the i7 as a six core 12 threaded, just like with the 8700K, because with this one uh, only having eight threads, even though it's eight physical cores, I would have to assume when it comes to multi-threaded workloads, the 8700K is actually going to beat it. So it really doesn't seem right now, at least just on paper, I'm just talking about just on paper, it doesn't seem like a whole lot of sense to go for the 9700K compared to the 8700K if you want the added, you know, multi-threaded, uh, the multi-threaded workload stuff like that. If you're doing video editing, anything like that, streaming, I would imagine you would want to have as many threads as possible, whether they're physical, logical, or otherwise. So it's kind of odd that they didn't just go with six cores, 12 threads there. And then of course the i5, we would expect that to not have hyper-threading. That's been what they've done traditionally. Um, but I thought it would have made made more sense if the i7 was six cores, 12 threads, and the i5 was six cores, six threads, and maybe we had uh, a frequency bump as well as cache, maybe some more PCI lanes, things along those lines. I thought that would have been a much better way to kind of segment out the stack here on the ninth gen mainstream processors from Intel. Let me know your thoughts, though, down in the comments below. I want to see what you guys think about it. They did briefly touch on game performance, and they did have some demos set up there, but without really sitting there and comparing it you know, with another system and everything, it's it's kind of hard to go by, but basically what they're promising is about a 10% improvement in performance versus the previous generation and around 40%-ish compared to like a three-year-old PC, which they were asked about. And it was it was a sixth-gen series processor that they had tested against, which was their the three-year-old PC that they made for a comparison. And they're saying it's about, looks like 35 to 40% faster in some of the games uh, and applications that they mentioned. But, you know, until we you know, we get a chance to actually test it. Uh, we'll have to see how much merit is to those claims. They also got some brand new packaging this time around for the Intel processors. It's got like an octagonal, octagonal. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's actually an octagon, but it definitely feels inspired by octagons because it's an octa-core processor. Um, it's like a clear box. It's got paper around it as well, and it kind of slides off uh, pretty easily. And it's kind of like just kind of hovering in the center of the box. The box that I was handling didn't actually have the 9900K inside of it, um, but that's the packaging that, that they're at least using um, for that processor. I don't know if it's going to be the same for the i7 and i5 as well, but that looks like that's what they're using for the i9s anyway. Uh, and yeah, I'm kind of indifferent on it, but hey, they're trying something new here with a little bit of a different packaging. I kind of feel like this maybe is inspired a little bit about, like, like it reminded me of like the AMD and what they did with their Threadripper packaging. So I, I don't know, maybe they took some inspiration there. I'm not really too sure, but it's definitely different from what they've done previously with just the standard cardboard box. On top of the mainstream processors, they did also show off some high-end desktop stuff with the new Core X series, which are gonna be eight to 18 cores respectively. They did show off the pricing and specs on all of these different processors as well. So we've got all the way at the top, we've got the 99, 80XE, which is going to be 18 cores, 36 threads. Uh, so this is going to be a pretty incremental update probably to the last generation, but they're going to have the new Intel Turbo Boost 3.0 on this. It's going to be coming in at just under $2,000, and I am really hoping, fingers crossed, that I get one of these in for testing because I would love to throw this thing inside of my main system, which I'm going to be rebuilding soon, and 
put this thing through its paces and be able to use it for video editing on a daily basis because right now I'm using a 6 core 12 threaded Broadwell E processor and I need an upgrade. Daddy needs an upgrade whether it's a 9900K or a 9980XE. I want one of these CPUs inside of my main system as soon as possible. So Intel, hook your boy up and uh, yeah. Thanks for having me at the event too, by the way. But I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. Please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on the coverage from the Intel 9th generation launch that I did up in New York City. I, I was going to record there, but I couldn't really find like a quiet corner to really record and get out of the way of everyone. And they also had like music playing and I didn't want to get a copyright strike for that. So I decided to record it here back in the studio when I got home. And I live like only like 45 minutes from the city anyway. So it was a pretty uh, short train ride in for me to be able to go to this event. But I was definitely happy to attend my first event with Intel. As I said, thank you to them for having me out. Look forward to going to more of them uh, in the future. And also keep a lookout on Steve's channel, Gamers Nexus. He did a, a video where he kind of interviewed all the different tech YouTubers and got our thoughts on, you know, the new launch and everything like that. So uh, you'll be seeing a little bit of a cameo from me, uh, Steve, uh, me, Paul, as well as Kyle and Steve's, one of Steve's videos that he's doing from the event. So be sure to head over to Gamers Nexus and check that out once it goes up. Maybe I'll add a card up here uh, once it's available and I can link it to you guys. But as I said, I'm going to get out of here. I look forward to your comments and discussion down below on the 9th gen. I, oh, I do want to see your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up on it down below. Subscribe if you're not already. And I'll catch you guys tomorrow for another video. Tara.